Okay, I'm just going to do a very quick lesson right now uh, and I'm going to step through how I created an alpha for ZBrush in Photoshop and um, uh, so just going into Photoshop uh, I've already done all of the uh, steps that uh, created this alpha and I'm just going to go through them in the undo history so I created a rectangular marquee. Well, first I enabled the grid uh, by, um, you can do that with control, um, inverted commas, enables your grid. And my grid settings are currently uh, at uh, grid line every 32, uh, divisions um, every two. Or, or two divisions per 32 and this is a 256 by 256 uh, black background uh, so with the grid enabled uh, I just drew in rectangular marquees and then I cropped the, the rectangular marquees on the side with other uh, marquees uh, fill that with white uh, then you draw a marquee over the entire um, rectangles down the middle and uh, the reason that I'm doing it along the middle of this uh, square is that I actually want this to be a rollable texture uh, or a rollable alpha and you'll see what I mean by that when we get to ZBrush. Uh, then I come in and I uh, perform a wave function and wave is just under distort in here and if you have a look at wave, you can see the settings that I have there. I've taken out randomness by making sure that the min and max are bumped up against one another. And I've just tweaked the settings until we have this sort of bell curve there. Uh, then with the uh, rectangular marquee, I've, um, I've made a rectangular marquee which is half the size of my canvas. And then I've, um, using the grid, I've just applied it to the center of our canvas. Uh, I feathered the marquee and I feathered it by 32 pixels uh, and then I used the spherize um, uh, distortion filter and I just spherized by a hundred percent there and because it's feathered you'll see that it blends in with the rest of the um, the rest of the flow that we have here. Uh, then using magic wand uh, actually I didn't use that because I uh, decided to go another direction. Uh, I used motion blur instead of Gaussian blur and the motion blur is going from left to right and if I bring that up here and motion blur you can see that I'm only going by 8 pixels and I've got an angle of 0 and that's just so that we I'll just undo that. Uh, that's just so that we have a blur applied to this, um, uh, to these very sort of stark block colors. Uh, and rather than use a Gaussian blur, if I used a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur, um, it wouldn't tile quite as nicely um, because uh, the actual edges here would be uh, blurred um, as if it was well just a solid block of color here and so uh, when th the bottom of the uh, of this wave meets the top of the wave here you would have a distinct line there so I used a Gaussian blur just going from left to right so that we don't have that that sort of um, uh, tiling issue I then uh, applied a gradient on the left and a gradient on the right and you can see my gradient is just uh, and I think you can just see it. It's it's just this one here, which is like the uh, the dark color and uh, transparent. And I just drew out the gradient from the second point here out to the edge, and then the second point on this side out to the edge. Second point from center line. And then I used brightness and contrast just to make sure that the um, the edges sort of blend a little bit better so that we don't have such a stark contrast between the black and the white. We have this sort of nice gradient here. Uh, so then I went to ZBrush and I've just got the default sphere and I've subdivided four times or three times. Um, 
Ooh, five times, okay. Uh, just until I've got um, at least a million uh, points. Uh, and that's just so I can get a, a feel for how nicely the alpha has turned out. And you can see that I've um, already imported the alpha and uh, I've called it fish flesh. Uh, and just a standard brush and uh, dot stroke and under the stroke menu I made sure that I've clicked on roll and uh, roll is uh, why I have been making sure that we have this nice tiling texture that goes from the bottom to the top or top to the bottom however you want to think of it and now uh, with um, a fairly low intensity, I'm using a mouse for this at the moment, fairly low intensity, a fairly large draw size, I'm just going to see how it looks and this is the alpha that we've come up with and you can see that uh, you just go over it with a, uh, and I've got my my um, smooth um, intensity is set quite low as well, it's down to 13 at the moment, that's just so I can go over that and um, remove any jaggies or, or any sort of uh, noticeable pixelation that comes through. And so you can see that we've got quite a nice alpha here. And all we really needed to do was um, a couple of things in Photoshop. And that's a, that's a bit of a bad stroke. I'm just going to undo that one. Uh, so yeah, and so you can blend these into one another like that. And so you can see that we've we've created quite a stylish or, or stylistic um, alpha just from doing a couple of things in Photoshop and just from knowing what we're sort of what we're doing and knowing the sort of feel that we're going for. Uh, you can come up with some quite interesting shapes. And uh, so yeah, that's how to uh, do up a basic alpha um, or uh, alpha texture for a roll, uh, roll brush in um, ZBrush using Photoshop.